Hello. We are writing equations of sine functions, given the property of that one function. So for the first one, I have the amplitude is 1, period is 4 pi, and then it goes th through the point 2 pi 1. Where do we start? So this is my standard form for s the sine function. So I need a, b, c, d in order to get that equation written out. So a, b, c, and d. So whenever possible, I will only hope that c or d are zeros, just because it makes everything easy. So the amplitude, let's just, so amplitude is a, so it's 1. Period is 4 pi, so I can calculate, given the period, I can calculate b. I know that the period is 2 pi over absolute value of b. So if the period is that, so I have 4 pi. I have to solve for b, multiply both sides by absolute value of b. So 2 pi equals 4 pi b. Divide both sides by 4 pi. You get b is 1 over 2. And after you do a couple of these, you're going to get the pattern here without having to write everything out every time. So for uh, let's assume that for now, c is 0. And I will show you an example when c definitely cannot be 0. So we can find d and then write out our function. So from here, I'll, I have a, b, c, and I'll plug everything in so I can find d. My function right there go, goes through the point 2 pi and 1, so I'll go ahead and plug in 1 for y, 2 pi for x, so I can solve for d. So here we go. Plug in 1 for y. a is 1. b is half. I'm just going to do 0.5. x is 2 pi. C is 0 for now. Okay. Now, half times 2 is 1. Yes? 1 pi. So I need to find what sine of pi is. So handy dandy unit circle right here. Sine of pi. So 0 pi, half pi, 1 pi. Remember that sine, sine is the y value of that one point right there on the unit circle. So pi is right there, sine of pi is the y value, so 0. So this guy right here is 0. Now that leaves me with d equals 1. d equals 1. Now I have a, b, c, 0. And d equals 1. Now I have everything I need to write the equation of the sine function with amplitude of 1, period 4 pi, and that goes through the point 2 pi 1. Okay, so amplitude is 1, so I don't have to write it, just sine. Um, b is half right there, half x, so I can just write x over 2, c is 0, and then plus d, d is 1. Okay, here we have a is 2. We need to calculate b. So period is 2 pi, absolute value of b. And I know the period is 2 pi, uh, 3 pi, sorry. Multiply both sides by absolute value of b. So here I have 2 pi equals 3 pi b. Divide both sides by 3 pi. I have b equals 2 over 3. So before I assume c is 0, I'll get there. So the whole point of c being 0 is just easier for us to calculate. So every time 
we end up with trying to calculate the sign of something. So everything that it's zero or pi over two or pi or three pi over two, notice that the sign will always be friendly. It will not be anything like negative square root of three over two. Will be either one, negative one, and it's really nice when sine of whatever that is is zero. It's it just makes our calculations easier. So whatever it is, I'm gonna try to make those multiples of pi over four or pi over two. Sorry about that. Over four would end up over there and it's not pretty. Okay, focus on the mission. We're still trying to find C. In this case, we're going to substitute y right there for 2. I mean, 2 is y. A is 2. Sine B is 2 thirds. X. I'm right there. So X is 3 pi over 4. And then at this point, that's when we make a choice. That's when we make our decision. So when we simplify here, I simplify this fraction, I get two right there. So think about the unit circle again. When I'm trying to find sine of pi over two, pi over two is right there. Sine of pi over two will be one. So that is doable. That means C can be zero. Okay. So plus D. So I have 2 equals 2 sine of pi over 2 plus D. Now from the unit circle, sine of pi over 2, pi over 2, sine is the Y value, it's 1. So right here, this value is 1. Okay? So 2 equals... 2 times 1 is 2, plus D, minus 2 on both sides, I have D equals 0. All right, write the equation. F of X, A, oh, D, D is 0. F of X, A, A is 2. Sine of B, B is 2 thirds. And then X, C, 0, D, 0. So here we go again. A is 3. We need to find B. We need to calculate B. So period is 5 pi over 3. So 2 pi over absolute value of B equals 5 pi over 3. Cross multiply that. So I have B 5 pi equals 6 pi. Divide both sides, I have B equals 6 over 5. Okay, so now I have this pretty little thing right here. Don't get intimidated by this. This is X and this is Y. Okay, so A is 3. And then I have A. No, that is not right. So y is 1, a is 3, sine b, b is 6 over 5, x, 4 pi over 3. Just like what we did in example 2, at this point we need to figure out what c could be to make our life doable. So 6 and 3 simplifies, I have 2 right there. Man, so when I look at this, I have, thank you, I have plus C and then plus D that I'm looking for. I will clean this up and then I'm going to, so 4 and 2 is 8 pi over 5. Now. 
Look back at your unit circle. When we're trying to choose a value for C, anything that falls where the sine of that angle falls in one of these four, that's what we want to do. But what is easier and better than when sine of whatever that angle is, you get zero? You know, everything multiplied by zero. Zero is just beautiful. Anyways, so we're going to try to make this zero pi. How do you make this zero pi? Oh, you do minus whatever this value is. Ta -da. So eight pi over five. You can't see. It was orange, but eight pi over five. It was green, but looks black. It's okay. Now I can solve for D because I know this adds up to zero and I know sine of zero is zero and three times zero, voila, is zero again. It makes everything better. So if this whole thing is zero, if this is zero, sine of zero, zero, three times zero, zero. So this is zero. I have zero right there. Okay. Plus D. That makes D, so C is negative 8 pi over 5. D is voila, 1. Now we have everything we need to write our function. So f of x, I have a, a is 3, sine b, b is 6 over 5, x. And then C is 8 pi over 5 plus 1. Voila. So every time you can, you want this angle right here to be 0. That makes everything better because it's easier for you to isolate D from that point.